Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, everybody. Welcome back uh, again. Uh, today, we're with Steve Campbell, the Brain Whisperer. Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Steve. Thank you so much for having me. This is, this is going to be fun today. Steve, uh, we originally started with uh, four videos that we that you designed to go in sequence, the, the foundational videos for the new brain science, for how our brain works, so that we could get to where we are now, which is a continuing series of different, how to deal with different issues in our life. And we did, uh, we did one on weight loss. And last time we got together, we were talking about um, uh, creating goals at work. Mm -hmm. And you said that you wanted to talk about affirmations today. So uh, we did a little mm -hmm. bit of exploration last time about the difference between what a goal is and what an affirmation is. And I, I'm, I'm expecting that you're going to clear that up for me even more yep. today. I will. I will. Good. Good. So let's let's begin with this. The, the primary element that holds all of us back from learning or growing and changing is what we say to ourselves. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of understanding that. You are in control. You decide what you're going to choose. People say, no, it's how I was raised and I'm stuck with this way. The problem with that is when you say that, your brain says, okay, yeah, you're right. You decide. Let me, let me illustrate this. Maxwell Maltz was an amazing person who began psychocybernetics, and no one really knows much about him, but he was an incredible person. He was a plastic surgeon specializing in female facial reconstruction. And so a patient would come into his office who had been burned, had been injured, and they would say, can you fix this? And they would, he would do the surgery. And oftentimes, or most times, it worked. But here's what he discovered when he began doing his practice back in the 50s. He discovered that when he worked with women who had been injured for a number of years, who had finally come to him and said, can you do something? And he did. When the wraps came off, they would often say, see, I told you it wouldn't work, even though it did. And he noticed that this happened over and over and over and over again. He realized that the problem was not up here. The problem was here. The problem is that they had seen themselves this way for years and years. And when he changed it, they could not see the difference. That was when he began realizing psychology needs to come into this too. So when they locked on to seeing themselves in the new way, that's how it worked. Remember my story of the rock when my dad taught me how to ride a bicycle and he said, don't run into that rock. And I got down on my back and I ran right into it. That rock is a affirmation. So let's talk about affirmations now. To do that, we need to understand what's called the lock-on, lock-out principle. When you lock on to, I cannot do this, you lock out, I can. That's the sad news. But the wonderful news is when you say, I can do this, you lock out, I cannot. So what's an affirmation? Well, when you say, I'm tired, that's an affirmation. In fact, when I teach this in a class, I have all my students sit back and say, okay, we're all going to yawn together and stretch. And at the peak of the stretch, we're going to say, I am really tired. So I have them all relax, and then one, two, three, and they all yawn. And then they say... I am really tired. And they put their arms back down on the table and you already know what happens. One gentleman actually fell asleep. 
And it was so cute, but I had to wake him up as he began snoring. When they said, I'm really tired, that is an affirmation. And your brain says, oh, okay, I'll make sure you are. Why? Because the brain believes what you tell it. When you say, this is really hard for me, your brain says, yes, it really is, and makes it hard. That's an affirmation. So let's, let's define an affirmation as psychology sees it. An affirmation is simply a statement that when written correctly triggers a picture in your mind of a goal that has already been accomplished. Say that again. It's nothing but a statement that when you write it correctly, which we'll talk about next, triggers, triggers a picture in your mind of a goal that has already been accomplished. Last time we talked about goals that work. And the key to make goals at work is to put them in the present tense. I'm already there. I've lost that weight. I paid off that loan. I've taken that trip. That's what an affirmation does, but it's formal. You say, these are the changes I want in my life. So I'm going to make an affirmation. Now, there are some guidelines which are on my book, but I'm going to share with you just some highlights. There's actually... 12 different guidelines, but I'm just going to share a few of them because of our time. Number one, you want to make your affirmation in one sentence because you'll begin to carry it around mentally in your pocket. One sentence. Very simple to understand. Okay. Number two, they need to be positive. An affirmation does not say, I will not do this and I will not do that. Did you know that your brain does not understand the word not? It doesn't know what to do with it. It gets confused. When you say, I will not have that piece of apple pie with the ice cream dripping over the sides, your brain doesn't know what to do. Because in the first part of the sentence, you're saying, I will have that apple pie. And then you switch it and you say, it will not. And the brain says, I don't know what to do with this. We know that because... When I say to you, don't touch the wall, I painted it, what do you want to do? Touch the wall. When you go to a restaurant and the waitress puts down the plate, she says, don't touch that plate, it's really hot. What do you got to do? You got to touch it. So affirmations do not contain any negatives. They're all positives. They're also in the present tense. Always in the present tense. Never, I will do this, I will do that. Let me share with you a story. I used to be a, a, elementary, a, a computer dean, an educational dean in the college. And students who come to my office, they sit down and they say, you know what, Mr. Campbell, I don't understand. I'm really trying. Whenever they said that, I put something in front of them. I said, that's wonderful. Try to pick that up. And they would pick it up, and I'd say, no, 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 don't tr pick it up. Try to pick it up. What do you mean? Try to pick it up. No, 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 don't pick it up. Try to pick it up. Can you see the point? The point is this. When you say, I'm really trying, the brain says, wonderful. Try the rest of your life. I don't have to do a thing. Remember how I've said in the past, the brain hates change? The brain does that when you say, I'm really trying. The brain says, great. Just try, and I can sit back and take a nap. It needs to be in the present tense. Number two, now the next one is you want to indicate achievement. Exactly how much you want to lose weight. So when I see an affirmation that says, I am losing weight, that's not going to do any good. How much and when? Because if you're not clear, the brain's going to get all fuzzy and doesn't know what to do with it. The most important guideline is this, and I'll say it slowly so you don't miss it. Make your affirmation a vivid picture. Make it so exciting that you cannot imagine going back to the old way. It has to be exciting, vivid. And this is where I can help you, okay? Finally, it needs to be realistic. 
and I use a realistic test. If you can't see yourself doing it, it's probably not realistic. You need to ratchet it back to where it is. Okay? So you've created your affirmations. What do you do with them? Well, you imprint them in your mind. How do you do that? What I do is I write them on a 3 by 5 card. And I put them on the inside of my medicine cabinet. So that every single time in the morning I wake up to shave, there they are. And what I do is I repeat them and I close my eyes and I imagine the feelings I'm going to have when they're completed, when they're met. I imagine how it's going to be great when the scale says 190 or when I paid the last mortgage or I've taken that trip to Alaska. I imagine how I'm going to feel. And then I do that every day. What are you doing? You're saying to your brain, I'm the boss. This is what I want in my life. Now, what's the most important part for making affirmations work? And I'll say this really slowly. Make them the strongest picture. So when you begin to gain that weight back, the strongest picture is that's just a blip. I'm losing more weight as time goes along. And the wonderful thing about the brain is the brain says you're absolutely right. Now, huge question. Do affirmations actually work? <laughs> Hello? Let me give you an illustration of how powerful they can be. I met my wife when I was 23. And we got married. I had been single for 23 years. She had also been single for 23 years. So we had a single mindset we walked down the aisle of this church stood in front of a minister and he said by the power invested in me I now pronounce you man and wife you may kiss the bride that was an affirmation but it was a one-time affirmation made by somebody else the minister and yet when he said that we locked on to that, and we've been married for 50 years. What happened? He said it. We locked on to it. It became a part of us, and for the next 50 years, we're still locking on to it. We're still saying we're married. We love each other. Our marriage is not like this. It's like this, like any marriage is, but that's what we do. And that's the way they work. So what is an affirmation? An affirmation is something that you want to create inside of yourself. What? A new self-image. A goal is something that you want to accomplish. An affirmation deals with self-images. A self-images are learned. You weren't born with them. They cannot be removed except through a lobotomy. You cannot change them because they're really hard to change, but you can create brand new ones. And the tool that you can use to create a new self-image is an affirmation. So the affirmation I created for myself was a 100, 200 pound person, a person who also has traveled all around the world. I created that affirmation about three years ago. I am not only a speaker here in America, but I travel all over the world doing this, and there, pretty soon I was finding myself doing it. Okay? And affirmation are for self images. The wonderful thing about self images is they can be created in your mind, and your mind says, okay, because you are the boss. Now, what happens when you do something that doesn't really line up with your affirmation? You use those words the next time, and you lock back onto them. As I've said so many times before in my presentations, we don't grow like this. We grow like this. And the wonderful thing about the brain is when you lock onto those affirmations, the brain just says, what? Oh, okay. 
Is it true? I don't even care. All I care about is what you tell me. You say it, I believe it. You lock on to it, you know what I will do. I will do everything I can to make it true in your life. Wow. That's exciting. So, Stephen, I think you've just answered a question that I had about affirmations, which is how often do you need to say them? And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, that the answer is as often as you need to. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Every single when I was losing weight, every single time I sat down for a meal, I basically went back to my affirmation. I said, I'm 200 pounds and I look fantastic. So I ate like a person who was 200 pounds, not 240. Mm. Or, and I would get up in the morning and go to my medicine cabinet, but I would carry them around in my pocket. So when I'm tempted to have that six or 700 calorie hamburger, I say, no, first of all, 200 pound people don't have snacks and they don't eat that much. And they eat half of it and take the rest of it home. Mm. Yeah, uh, we have in, in uh, the whole series that we've been talking about um, uh, uh, a few weeks ago and now like losing weight and setting goals or what have you. Uh, we haven't um, uh, and we've talked about your book, but I think that at this time uh, I'd like uh, you to give the uh, maybe an address of a website they can go to and they can mm -hmm. find out more about maybe getting this book. So. Uh, where would be the best place for them to go? Well, the best place to buy my book is Amazon. And uh, the name of the book is Making Your Mind Magnificent. There's also a wonderful seminar, six hour, that I gave in Silicon Valley for many, 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 many years. And my daughter went to it a lot of times. And finally she said, Daddy, we need to get this online because this information is so wonderful. So the seminar is available and the usual cost is $297, but during the COVID crisis, I've lowered it down to 49 And if you would like to get information about that, please email me at stevenc at sbcglobal.net. That's S-T-E-V-E-N-C, Stephen C, at sbcglobal.net. Thirdly, and people say, why do you give your number out? Because I want to talk to people. If you want to talk to me, you can call me at 707-480-5007. Thank you. Uh, by, by the way, uh, I just want you to know, um, uh, and met many in our audience who we don't see live when uh, they're watching us, uh, that at the very opening when uh, you were talking about your students joining, uh, John and I uh, played along. Um, and then I, I I had to call John's wife uh, and ask her to wake him up. Uh, but he, <laughs> he was very nice. He put his phone on silent. So we actually, when you, were, when you were giving the example, we were both yawning along with it. And then when you said, you know, yeah, wake up again, we were right with you. So uh, it was a very powerful message. And even though you couldn't see us, we wanted to let you know that we were with you in spirit. In spirit. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Good. Stephen, thank you so much. These, every one of these individual um, issue, I don't know what else to call them, individual issue videos are different, but they all relate back to the first four foundational videos right. that you did, that sequence of four training videos to, yes. to learn how this all works. That's so, the foundation of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this, yeah. this is wonderful series. I hope that our viewers watch all of these videos and begin with the first four foundational videos because that'll help everything make more sense. So and we look forward to the next one. And also, Thank just you. as a final note, uh, uh, for people who want to actually watch the first four foundational videos, if they go to our YouTube channel, Celebrating Act Two, uh, there's a playlist. Uh, I think I put it under Brain Whisperer, uh, and they'll be able to watch not only an introduction to you that we did several months ago, which was fascinating, but also the uh, the four foundational principles in order, and then uh, followed by this series that we're doing now, uh, which um, uh, really helps cement 
the knowledge that uh, you've been giving, because it's not something you learn overnight, uh, but it's through some repetition. Uh, I love what you said. It's not something that you learn overnight. People people give give up their affirmations because they think, well, if it doesn't happen in a week, it's not going to happen. We need to realize that what you're really doing when you create an affirmation proactively is that you're rewiring your brain. Mm. And that, in some cases, takes time because your self-images are based on the messages that you've been giving yourself, your self-taught. Some of those messages you have been giving yourself your entire life. And you're not going to create new self-images based on the images that you've been giving overnight. Give yourself some space to mess up because you're going to. Sure. Welcome to the world. What do you do with the feelings? We'll talk about that next. Great. Okay. Thank you. Great. Stephen, looking forward to it. Thanks so Thank much. You. You're so welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.